So this is a modern day miracle. It is a device that is pervasive, it's coveted, everyone loves it, and I'm pretty sure everyone here has at least one of them with you right now. At least one, purse or pocket. I'm even more sure that some people here, even though they want to admit it publicly, would get separation anxiety if this was not with them. With just this one device, we see how the Department of Commerce actually has had a huge influence on society. If you think about the material standards of manufacturer, they're all based on reference data from NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology. If you think about the intellectual property for the technology in this device, that's safeguarded by PTO, the Patent and Trade Office. You think about your weather app, that touches data from NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. You think about a stock app, it tells you the impact of the next GDP release. That information comes from BEA, the Bureau of Economic <laughs> Analysis. You think about the apps on it, and you think about how they figure out where they are, and that leverages census data. All the companies, you know, startup companies that are either organic or in incubators or accelerators, at some point, directly or indirectly, touched EDA, the Economic Development Aid Administration, or MBDA, which is a Minority Business Development Agency. All the components in here are part of trade, which is supported by ITA, which is International Trade Administration. So in this one example, you have all the 12 bureaus at the Department of Commerce contributing to this thing that we take for granted, that is material to our everyday life. And the same is true for a lot of products. Now, with that, I can actually really confidently say that the Department of Commerce is America's data agency because literally the data we collect and that we disseminate goes from the surface of the sun to the deepest depths of the ocean itself. Um, added to that, we have leadership in the Secretary, Secretary Penny Pritza, who has actually made it her initiative to actually have data and open data at the forefront. So of her strategic plan, there are five pillars. Data is one of them. The next thing that she's actually done is created this office of the chief data officer, and which I'm part of, which is focused on how do we get one, businesses and people empowered through open data and transparency, both inside and outside of the department. Two, how do we actually make sure that people interact with data differently? So how do we make sure that the, the, the experience that you have coming to a DOC website is seamless and is natural and you get exactly what you actually want? And finally, we have this mission of how do we actually streamline or fast track the initiatives at the different bureaus themselves? Now, today, this is a lightning talk, so I'm gonna share just two quick incidences, two quick episodes or projects that we're trying to do. The first is the exporters, the new exporters project. And, and for this, I want you to close your eyes for a few seconds. Uh, close your eyes, thank you. And imagine Stephanie. Stephanie is a small business owner. She manufactures furniture and she's really, really good at it. I mean, she's so good that she's won awards at the county fair for her you know, rustic and amazing designs. You can open your eyes now, it's fine. But Stephanie has you know, one issue. She's producing, say, like you know, 50 to 100 units in her shop every week. She wants to grow, but she has no idea how to actually do it. Wouldn't it be amazing if Stephanie could actually get market intelligence that tells her if I want to actually sell and have a positive revenue stream coming in, there's, this is where I should actually focus on. Right? Wouldn't it be amazing if Stephanie got a recommendation that says these are the countries that you should be targeting for export? Say she got a piece of mail or she got an email or some other form that basically told her, listen, Stephanie, there are these companies that are exactly like you. They're making X percentage you know, growth on their business by exporting to country X, Y, and Z. 
Maybe you want to consider doing that yourself. If these companies are like Stephanie, then why can't she do the exact same thing? Right? That is the point of the New Exporters Project. How do we deliver that market intelligence to small businesses? The second project is the new, ex well, it's the, um, I'm going to call it the new risk modeling project, or risk model 2.0. It's a working title right now. Think of a typical day. Let's time travel a little bit. Say it's June, and say you had a hard day at work, you're driving home, you park in the driveway, you rush in, you know, greet the spouse and the kid if you have kids, play with them for a little bit, have some dinner, tuck them in, have some quality time, go to bed. And you wake up in the morning and you see dents in your car from big balls of hail just nestled into the surface of your car. Wouldn't it be amazing if your weather app kind of proactively said to you, hey, there's a high probability of an adverse storm event happening. Maybe you want to take some corrective action. Maybe you want to move that car into the, into the garage somewhere or protect your valuables. Or say it's not the weather app. Say that's not a business model that the weather company actually wants to get into. Say it's your insurance company. So they want to protect you and they want to protect you know, their liability. So wouldn't it be amazing if they actually said to you, based on the fact that we have weather data from the Department of Commerce knowing our risk models, that we think there's a high chance of a hailstorm coming in the next two hours. Maybe you want to move your car inside. With the risk model 2.0 project, what we want to do is that we want to actually invest or integrate information from the different bureaus into the risk models of businesses and ordinary people such that some good can actually come of it. That we can actually, I mean, this is a high probability, but it's, it's true. So we can actually save lives and save property. Like the mission of the Department of Commerce, very simply, is we want to create the conditions for economic growth and opportunity. In the process, when there are times of risk, we want to actually do things that are good and that will actually help the citizens. With the two projects, like, there is one thing that is, is true that's common between them, and that's, that's the power of open data in both cases. Uh, well, particularly open data from the Department of Commerce. Uh, and the power comes in the fact that you're integrating that data across multiple data sets, both within the bureaus and outside of the department itself, to actually do good. For a, a user-specific, user-driven scenario, whereby we're helping or improving lives and businesses. I think I'm going to actually like stop with that example and kind of leave you with, with something to think about. Because I realize I'm probably the only thing between you and lunch, and you've already had a long, long day. So let me not prolong your torment or torture. So while you're having lunch, and you know, hopefully you're meeting oops, new people, I want you to think about how can I help the Department of Commerce help me? And once you have an answer for that, and it's focused on open data and how we can actually help improve your life or your business, you send me an email. Thank you.